All right, so uh, yeah, that clip, um, you know, I mean, all of the, you know, the tunnel of, of, of prejudice and the hall of stereotypes um, aside where, you know, they're trying to teach the boys about um, acceptance and the irony is, you know, when they come out into the, after they've left the museum where they all scorn um, the smoker, um, you know, so they're talking about tolerance. Um, you know, but they don't tolerate someone else's life choices or life's difference where they, you know, the guys are trying to bring up some of the, um, you know, I would say irony or the paradox of tolerance, which we'll get into um, in a lot more detail as we move along in, in, this, in this class in term um, and specifically when we talk about libertarian philosophy, not libertarian governmental philosophy, but um, the philosophy of libertarianism, um, which is a major part of South Park in terms of you should be able to have your freedom of choice unless your choices negatively impact society. So how, you know, it's, it's, it's not ethical for us to berate smokers and not tolerate smokers because maybe they're not harming us right, not accept smokers because they're not harming us by smoking um, in, you know, an open public space, yet we've banned that in, in many places, um, you know, uh, and it's just a pretty interesting, you know, part that they bring up of about tolerance is that it's not truly ex acceptance, and so I think, though, when you watch this clip, um, you know, when they bring up all the, the, the prejudices and the slurs and the, and the negative stereotypes, you know, again, how that's read has to deal with the, the intellectual capability and tools of, of, of the viewer. So I think for, um, you know, a lot of 15 or 14 year old kids, they may think it's just funny and they may use some of those words or use some of those stereotypes or they may reinforce their prejudices or stereotypes versus all of you who I know can look at it and see it, you know, for, for maybe what it is. Again, the fact that it could do those things, that it could reinforce those things in the user, but hopefully it, you know, it makes you think a little, a little bit about, um, you know, the role of stereotypes and prejudice and specifically in American society. Um, the Museum of Tolerance is actually a real place. Uh, for those of you who are in California or Los Angeles, it's a, uh, it's uh, basically a place um, that you can go. Um, it's primarily that a place that deals with um, the Holocaust in terms of you know all the people out there who don't believe it existed. It's it, you know it's partly about about how it did actually <laughs> fucking exist. Um, you know, so it's it's you know you can go there. Uh, probably not now, um, but once this pandemic is over, you can go there and check it out. Um, but I think what you got to think about with South Park is that, you know, South Park, you know, actually parodies stereotypes. They actually mimic, you know, these beliefs that people have about groups of people and to deconstruct them. They, so they make them sort of like um, hyper real, you know, in order to show how fucking ridiculous these stereotypes are. So they become these hyper or meta stereotypes. Um, and they try to break them down. So you see so many, many different types of stereotypes in South Park. Religious stereotypes, racial stereotypes, class, gender, celebrity, basically everything becomes a stereotype in South Park. And it plays off of common stereotypes held by groups, common stereotypes cultivated by um, the media as well. Um, so it plays with that a ton. Okay, the purpose of this, again, should be, and I think is to, you know, show how stereotypes in and of themselves are fucking ridiculous, that, that, you know, they're wrong, you know, I think that's really what they're trying to show now, that necessarily doesn't get us there, it doesn't necessarily do anything for the viewer, but, you know, maybe makes you realize how ridiculous, you know, stereotypes are, whether they are positive or, or negative, okay? But what they're trying to show is how stereotypes are often the byproduct of extreme excess, um, extreme dogma, so beliefs that you believe are right and are unchangeably, undeniably correct, and extremist viewpoints, which we'll start getting into as we move along throughout this torn. And I want you to think, toim, toim, <laughs> term. Uh, I want you to think too, you know, like does South Park challenge or reinforce these stereotypes? That's a major thing to just kind of 
think about. And that's going to deal with like a lot with you and your, your view on, on the show and who, who you are. Cause you may feel like, yeah, like that clip from the museum of tolerance actually really in, reinforces a lot of negative, negative stereotypes and could be like pretty harmful for certain uh, consumers or all consumers uh, of that stuff. So just something to think about. All right. So we are going to watch child abduction is not um, funny. Um, and uh, I also want us to watch, um, uh, there's a, a clip from Six Days to Air uh, about uh, shitty sushi. God. City sushi <laughs> uh, and, and city walk. God, I can't say it not shitty. Um, and, uh, you know, basically, you know, where the guys start talking about stereotypes, how they're reinforcing them. Um, they interview some of the, um, you know, uh, Asian employees at the studios, etc., about that. So I'll tag that on at the end of my next clip, just so you can watch it on our way out. But you have to see this character, Tang Lu Kim, who you find out actually in later episodes is actually um, white, um, uh, and therefore becomes you know this sort of yellow face um, character in South Park. Um, he's kind of based upon this. Um, character played by Mickey Rooney called uh, Mr. Yonioshi. Um, and uh, there's a little image of, of him where he plays an Asian in sort of a very like negative way, which is also part of what Tong Lu Kim is, is a pretty negative stereotype. As you will see when we get into this episode where he has to build a shitty wall uh, for the shitty city of, of South Park. So um, when he builds the Great Wall of South Park, what are the threats? I want you to think about what are the threats, okay? Um, and the possible threats, I think that is pretty patently obvious, is terrorists, um, school shootings. Right now it would be to keep out a fucking virus. Um, think about the role of the media in this. So they, they really use the media when we think about intertextuality and all that stuff. How does the media play a role in the narrative here? And then media play a role in creating fear where we want to build walls and protect our sort of views, our world, our little bubble. And again, right now, um, turn off the fucking news, yo. Get like 30 minutes of some shit and then turn that shit off. If you're watching CNN or Fox News or whatever, oh my lord, just get 30 minutes of it and roll the fuck out. This shit's gonna make you crazy and scared, whatever. So uh, think about the role of the media in perpetuating not only stereotypes, but fear, um, where you want to build walls. And also, what does rabble rabble really mean? When the parents start rabble rabbling, I think this is a really important part, okay? So think about elements of satire and parody as we watch this, and think about um, elements of stereotypes and intertextuality as they come up throughout this episode. So do enjoy, this is a classic. Um, we'll catch you on the flip side. <laughs> 